Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to jump right into um, a gun talk. Uh, I got this idea from watching a couple other YouTube short videos and then uh, talking to some people around. And it, it got me thinking about something. Something that I've been hearing um, around and I think some people have some some really uneducated ideas about certain things surrounding guns so I, I want to talk about that before I go on any further uh, first you know the uh, the guns that I have here if you guys have never seen my channel before or seen any of my gun talk videos they're all Glocks okay that's they're all Glocks I, I don't really have a whole lot of different variations of guns uh, my main reason for having Glocks is because uh, since I've been in law enforcement, of course, that's what law enforcement carry is Glocks. So that's what I buy. So with that being said, um, we're going to talk about what exactly makes a gun a tactical gun. So uh, and let me give you a little backstory on this. So the other day I was watching a video and a guy was doing a video about why one gun that he had was a tactical gun and then why the other gun could not be a tactical gun and his his uh, I guess you could say everything that he was talking about was coming from um, an aesthetic look you know what what characteristics on the gun did he see that made that gun a tactical gun versus the other gun that he had um, I'll try to find that video again if I can to make sure I get, let you guys know what the guns were that he had in his video. Or maybe I can try to link the video uh, in the description section or try to put one of the little cards up here. So that way you guys can click on the video and you'll be able to know what I'm talking about. So, so first of all, here's what we're going to do. So right here is my Glock 27. This is a Gen 4 Glock 27 chambered in 40 caliber. Uh, right here is my Gen 4 Glock 22, also chambered in 40 caliber. And then the newest one to the family is my Glock 17 Gen 5, um, you know, chambered in 9mm. reason I did that was because I was wanting to put a red dot on this gun, but the, uh, the problem that I ran into was I, I couldn't find any stores or at least law enforcement stores that was selling the uh, Gen 522 with the MOS cut. So I would either have to send this slide off to get it milled so I could put a red dot on there, or I could buy a new slide, which cost about the same as buying a brand new gun. So I just decided I'm just going to buy me a uh, the Gen 5 Glock 17 with the MOS on it, and that was the option I went with. Okay, so here we go. We're going to get into this. So, as y'all can all see, that uh, slides are locked to the rear, no magazine, gun's empty. And then my Glock 27, also slides locked to the rear, no magazine, so it is empty. Now, this is the uh, TLR6 uh, laser light combo. Uh, probably the only reason I put that, that on there is to have a flashlight on the gun. I just have a strong belief that if your gun allows a light to be mounted onto it you should do that mainly because um, it gives you that option if you're in a low light condition you're able to still have both hands on the gun while still being able to utilize a flashlight versus you having to carry an extra flashlight on you and then trying to do the different carry techniques now, with that being said, you still need to carry a, a handheld flashlight so that way if you're doing something that does not require you to have your gun out of your holster, you're not using the flashlight on your gun and you're pointing your gun in directions that you don't need to. So, uh, always have a handheld flashlight, but I also think that having a flashlight mounted onto your guns is always a good thing. Now, when I bought this gun, at the time... I was carrying this gun as my uh, duty weapon 
And so I wanted to carry this one as my backup gun because the Glock 22 magazines will fit into this Glock 27. Uh, you will hear most people try to say that because this is the subcompact, this is not a tactical gun. It can't be a tactical gun. In fact, you can't even use this as a duty gun. I say to that, it's a, it's a preference, basically. I don't think there is a such thing as a tactical gun versus a non-tactical gun. Here's the reason why I'm saying that. Uh, depending on your department policies for the individual departments, if you're talking law enforcement, uh, some departments for their detectives, they have discretion on which gun they carry on them. Most detectives will carry the full-size pistol that's issued to them by the department. However, if you take a subcompact to the range and you qualify with it, you can carry that as your duty gun. Uh, you might be, you might have to adhere to some kind of um, round uh, limit. Not saying that you're limited to so many rounds, but you have to carry so many rounds in that gun. So with my Glock 27 here, um, I can buy the Glock 23 mags, which will give me a round count of 13 rounds in the magazine. So I could have a 13 plus 1 if I put one in the chamber. But that at least gives me 13 rounds to carry on the gun. Of course, you would have to buy the uh, sleeve extender to put onto your magazine so you'll get a full grip. Or if you buy the extended magazines for the Glock 27, that gives you about another 2-3 rounds and gives you that full grip without having to put that uh, sleeve on there. But if you take this gun to the range and qualify with it, you can carry this as your primary duty weapon. Now, where you run into not really issues, but some things you would have to remember, if you are a detective and your department has a part-time SWAT team, most of the SWAT teams will run the full-size guns. So you still have to carry that full-size gun in your kit. But for your everyday carry, uh, some detectives, they still wear suits, so they don't want a really big bulky gun. They usually go with the subcompacts. Again, that's a, a preference for that detective and if his department allows that. Now, the reason I said I don't think or I don't believe there is a tactical gun. If I... So, again, in the video, one of the things that the guy in the video pointed out was the fact that the, uh, the gun, one of his guns had the uh, Picatinny rail, rail that allowed you to mount a flashlight or lasers or whatever. Yes, that's what it was intended for you to mount those things, but again, that was with the intentions of being able to take a flashlight, I'm about to say this one don't work, that rail gives you that option of having a flashlight going from your hand now to your gun so you still have positive grip and control on your gun while still being able to manipulate a flashlight in a low light situation. Same thing here with my Glock 17. I can take my Streamlight flashlight off and then if I did decide to take my red dot off of there I would still have just a regular old plain Jane Glock 17 that I could still and please note people uh, your special ops guys rarely have flashlights mounted on their pistols. Reason being, if they do, it's because mission dictate that they need a flashlight, therefore they will mount a flashlight. But most of the times, your special ops guys, they're running night vision, so they don't carry flashlights on every one of their guns. So, they might not have... A, uh, a flashlight mounted to their pistol because they're running night vision so they don't need a flashlight. Um, a lot of them don't run the, the red dots because they have trained so heavily with iron sights they are very proficient, I, I will say beyond proficient, they are experts with their pistols with just the iron sights. So 
mission dictates for them how they equip their guns. For me, and being in law enforcement, again, I have a flashlight that I keep in my uh, pocket, as well as I have a Streamlight Stinger flashlight that is in my patrol vehicle. So I have two handheld flashlights that I can use. I just like to still have a flashlight on my pistol. So in low light conditions, you enter into a room that you can't see in. I can still keep a good positive grip on my gun while activating my flashlight if need be. What makes these guns a tactical gun and what makes them your everyday concealed carry gun? Here is the big secret, people. Okay, The secret to making your gun either a concealed everyday concealed carry weapon versus your full size tactical weapons it's what's up here guys okay what is up here will determine what these do Every, we always say it these okay these are tools these are just the tools to help you do your job. What is up here is what makes these tools either tactical or your everyday concealed. It's not the pants you wear, it's not the shirt you wear, it's not the high dollar um, cry JPC body armor. It's what's up here. I can run around with this gun with the magazine that came with it, and this is only a nine round magazine, guys. Okay, nine rounds in here. I can run around with this gun and my pajamas and still be tactical because up here I am thinking tactics. Am I putting myself at a tactical advantage over my bad guys? That's what's going to make the difference in whether or not your weapons, your tools, are tactical or not this has a laser on it see that this has a laser it is a laser light combo I don't use the laser a whole lot I mainly use the flashlight on this gun but this is what I carry is my everyday concealed carry but if I am thinking tactically this is now a tactical gun because my tactics come from what's up here. My training and what I know about my surroundings and then what I know about this weapon and how I can use it is what's going to make this a tactical gun. Even in a situation when I'm going to Walmart, if I am always thinking tactically, when I walk into whichever side of the store I walk into, if I'm already thinking uh, exits, good hiding places, uh, ambush points, and then how I'm carrying this gun and my round count. If I take all of that information and I think tactically about when would be the best time uh, to deploy my weapon, if I have to engage a bad guy, when and where do I want to do that? I want to put myself at the tactical advantage to where I don't have to use as many rounds. I'm going to get a good clean shot to put the threat down and use uh, the least amount of rounds possible that's putting me at a tactical advantage even with this this EOTech this EOTech E-Flex does not make this gun a tactical gun it's going to help me get on target a lot faster but that still does not determine whether or not this is a tactical gun again that's me I usually tell people when I, when I talk to them about guns, I'll tell them, I've got a gun on my hip, I've got a gun on my ankle, I've got two pocket knives. How many weapons are in this room? And of course, they'll count how many guns, how many knives, all of that stuff. And then I'll still tell them, there's only one weapon in this room. That's me. I'm the weapon. These are just the tools to help me do what I need to do. So, just because your pistol has a Picatinny rail for you to mount a flashlight or uh, some kind of a laser optic now this thing don't wanna there we go so you got your flashlights ok 
Okay, flashlights, your red dots, suppressor height night sights, all of that stuff still does not make that gun a tactical gun. That's me. My training, my tactical training, my law enforcement training, all of that stuff is what's going to determine whether or not I am being tactical in that situation. My movement, am I just running down the hallway with my feet slapping the floor, making this loud sound, letting everybody know where I'm at, or am I moving slow and at a stealthy pace? To where I can approach the bad guy quietly, possibly even take them down with some kind of a restraint maneuver without firing a round. That's tactical. Okay? We've all heard the same. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And I've heard some people say, nope, that's total BS. Slow is slow. Okay? Break that down and think about it. Slow is smooth. I have seen people on the gun range trying to be so... John Wick fast with their weapon, they look like Paul Blart about to have a damn, about to pass out. Because they're trying to fight to get their gun out of the holster because they don't know their equipment. If they slow things down, make everything a nice, you know, fluid, smooth motion, and then you work from that and build up your speed. Now, you're moving slow, but you're moving smooth. And then you'll start to realize that because you're not fighting your equipment, you're actually moving a lot faster than what you think. So, yes, slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. That means if you're moving slow, you're moving smooth. And once you can start moving very smooth with your equipment and how it's set up, you're going to be moving fast. This stuff right here, slow, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. That could also translate to how do you walk? If you're walking at a stealthy pace, it might look like you're moving slow, but you're not drawing attention to yourself. And it's allowing you to move at a fast pace without drawing attention, which means you're moving fast. I've, I've done some training where the instructors were saying, don't get ahead of yourself. And... I thought, man, was I moving too fast? Was I running through this? What was going on? I asked some of the other guys in the class, and they were like, nah, man, you weren't, you weren't running, you weren't moving fast, but you were just moving at a very consistent pace, and it was very smooth. To me, it looked like I ran through the whole exercise, but to everybody else, they said it was just a very smooth, consistent pace. So in translation, I was moving fast, but I made it look good, okay? I'm not trying to pat myself here. I'm just saying, if you are moving tactically at a nice, smooth pace, you'll actually move a lot faster than what you think. You might even think you're moving too fast when you're really not. You're actually going at a slow pace, but it's so smooth that it looks fast. That's what tactics is. That's what being tactical is. Being tactical is not having the um, streamlight flashlight, the Eotech uh, red dot with suppressor height sights, and then you got the tricked out triggers and all of that stuff. That's not making your gun tactical. That's just making your gun expensive. And if you don't know how to shoot the thing, you've got an expensive gun. You didn't invest time in the one important thing, which was you and your skills. Okay? So, I'm sorry that I had to do this to y'all. There it is. I don't think that there is anything or one particular thing that really says your gun is a tactical gun or not. This gun does not have a Picatinny rail. It is too small. However, this light attaches to the trigger guard. So, according to that other guy's video, that because the gun that he referenced in his video had a Picatinny rail, and you were able to attach a flashlight and or laser, that's what made it a tactical gun. I have been able to attach a flashlight and laser to a gun that does not have a Picatinny rail. So, does this still qualify as a tactical gun?
something to think about. Y'all drop a comment down there and let me know how you feel about that one. But again, guys and girls, I do not want to count out the ladies if there are ladies that watch this channel. Just because your gun has certain features, suppressor height sights, you have a Picatinny rail so you can attach flashlights and lasers, whether you send it off to get the, uh, the uh, get it milled out so you can attach uh, a, red, a red dot, or your gun already comes that way, none of those things really make your gun tactical. It is your training and your skills that will determine if your weapon is a tactical gun or not. One of my favorite shows that I like to watch is SEAL Team. Uh, there's a particular scene. There's actually a couple of scenes that I'm going to reference right here. One of the scenes where uh, actor David Boreanaz, who plays Jason Hayes, who's team leader of SEAL Team uh, uh, Bravo Team, and I'm trying to think of what his name is. It's uh, Neil Brown, I believe who plays Ray Perry, they're at the gun range. Jason's gun, he's got regular sights on, on, um, oh my gosh, on Ray's gun, he's got a red dot on his. It doesn't matter. Their skills in that show as Navy SEALs is what make those guns tactical. There was another scene where another member on the SEAL team was being attacked by a bad guy and Ray kind of has a moment where he freezes up because he has PTS. And uh, Sonny Quinn, who is played by actor, uh, I can't think of his name, but uh, his his character, Sonny, has to take the headshot on that bad guy to save their other team member. He draws his pistol and takes a shot, and I believe he had the Glock 19X. Regular sights on it, but he made that shot. It was because of his skill set as a shooter and a SEAL team member that made that gun tactical, not the fancy design of Glock that made that gun a tactical gun. So, to wrap up this video, trying to find stuff. To wrap up this video, guys, there isn't one thing or there's nothing that you can add to your gun that's going to make your gun a tactical gun or not. Okay? My everyday concealed carry gun, only because of size can still be a tactical gun because of how I use tactics to my advantage. So please keep that in mind. It's not your clothes. It's not your guns. It's not the, the fancy gear that you buy. It's not even the fancy gear you buy and put on your gun. It's the knowledge that's up here in your brain that will determine whether or not your tools are tactical or not. If you guys got any arguments with what I just said, please drop them in the comment. We'll have a private moment and talk about it. Hopefully we can come to an understanding. But that's just my thoughts on it, guys. You can have a regular gun and still be tactical with it. I can go out here and take a dang high point, and I hate that gun. I hate it. But I could take a high point 9mm and still be tactical than somebody who goes out and buy a Gucci'd up uh, staccato but they don't know anything about tactics all they know is they've got an expensive gun but their tactics suck my gun the high point will still be more tactical because of how I use it and use my knowledge in tactics so with that being said guys don't get so caught up on the gear to determine whether or not you're tactical study and learn more about tactics and then use that knowledge with your tools to be tactical. Okay? Not tactical, tactical. Okay? Again, drop me some comments. Let me know what you guys think. If you like the video, smash the thumbs up button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Click on the bell. Click on the all so that way you get uh, notified every time I put out a video. Thanks for watching. Guys, please be safe out there on the range. Be safe out there on the streets. Always watch your six. And until the next time, see you guys later.